everybody, this is Keto from Lazy Mode Gaming, and I'm here for kind of like a little vlog-based segment for this game right now. You're going to be basically been following me on the Final Fantasy XV side. If you have, then this is just my little, basically my opinion about what's been happening during Chapter 1. Now, this will be the only time I'm doing this, I promise you that, because what's going on is I'm going to be talking about Kingsglaive. Now, Kingsglaive, it, I'm just going to cover the basics of what's important towards the game side of the thing. The movie's a great movie, and I would recommend you going to go pick it up, watch it, rent it, whatever you need to do. At least see it, because it does help expand on the characters that show up in the game. And because they show up later, I can't really fully explain or say anything, because it's going to spoil it. Now, you have seen some people, but I can't say much, because you don't know about that type of situation, unless you've seen this movie or you've beaten the game before. So that's why i got to talk about that. All right. So basically the title for this little video is going to be King's Glaive, Death of a King. Now, you play as Noctis through the Final Fantasy video game itself. Now his father is a king, so he is the Prince Noctis. His father is king of the uh, Lucian Empire, like, I want to say territory, not empire, because they're not, they don't consider themselves empire. But the main, like, capital would be Insomnia, which is where you left. Now you saw this at the very beginning when it wasn't the actual fighting the what was it the creature which you won't see until later on the game because that's it's like hey we're gonna start you mid game you're gonna see this like little small segment real quick and then we're gonna throw you back to the very beginning of this adventure now that first scene where you're seeing the king walking or talking to uh noctis and basically heading him off and leaving and all that now that seems very important especially for some of the details i'm going to point out real quick for this little video all right but yeah Kingsglaive does follow alongside with Chapter 1 of Final Fantasy XV. should be taken in as a prelude to the events that are going to be following within the following chapters. Now, what happened during Kingsglaive? A lot, actually. What is Kingsglaive is a better question, though, because we actually heard it come up a couple times, especially within the game. Now, Kingsglaives are basically the King's Royal Special Guard. They have special abilities that come from the crystal, which is used to guard Insomnia from the Niflheim Empire. I think it's what they call themselves. And they're basically there to help fend off against the daemons. Now, daemons are these creatures that are going to show up during the nighttime. Sadly, we haven't gotten to the point where I've actually had to walk around during the night in the first chapter because I basically was just going through the story base. But it will come up at a later point through the game. It was basically talking about it. If we get lucky and I don't play through the nighttime, I will be very surprised. But it we'll see what happens basically as I go through it. Now, majority of the characters were <laughs> of the King's Glaive, they are immigrants who were destroyed by the Empire, so they're there to actually form and it's this huge group. Now, in a sense, that does kind of partake to the story because there's a lot of things you got to know about what the King's Glaive is. There's like the whole entire armor and the suits designed for the King's Glaive because they are the Royal Special Guard. They're the front end. Insomnia is all about bringing people together and just being unique and uh, basically forming I I can't remember the name, word off the top of my head so I apologize I'm reading based off a script that I wrote up and I'm just trying to lay it out for you through it how it is but there's only certain points that I didn't cover yet so I have to go through that as well now the next part is I'm basically going to be skipping down to the fiery end of it of the movie itself so the movie is important but the key points you want to focus on were the cutscenes that showed up within chapter 1 now there was a big armored dude, he did stab the king, and the king's dead. That was true. That literally happened. You actually know who the big armored dude is too. If you remember that scene at the very beginning on the staircase, it's that big bodyguard that was standing right behind the king himself. He was actually a double eight or a spy, basically. He was a double crossing agent. He was working for Niflheim and had this dark unit guy who just basically went to take over and all that fun shenanigans. He's dead. Granted, so you don't have to worry about that. You do get the revenge. You get to take the throne back from the villains and stuff as you go through the game. Great combat system, and that ending was actually kind of interesting to play through, and I was impressed. Now, there were a few creatures that appeared as well. There was this big... and then, Actually, that's a good one. The creature that showed up that just was towering. It was just basically lay laying out fire and all that. That's actually what a daemon is. We don't fight... Anything like that in Final Fantasy XV that I know of, unless there's like a secret boss that I haven't found yet through my first playthrough. 
because I'm using the knowledge from the first playthrough to help cover the bases of playthrough for you guys so we can actually get the footage down instead of me basically running around like an idiot with my head chopped off like I did with No Man's Sky. Now, if you don't remember that, good, because that was terrible. Continuing on, though. And the reason why Niflheim actually was in uh, Insomnia was because they actually were offering a peace treaty. The peace treaty was supposed to make it so that Lucia, or Luci all the Lucians' territory gets turned over to Niflheim for exclusion of Insomnia. Now, Insomnia, or Insomnia if I get to talk, will be the only place that's not going to be affected by Niflheim. Niflheim promises not to target or attack Insomnia as long as all of the Lucian territory, excluding that, was given over to them. Now, granted, on top of that, Niflheim wanted the wedding to actually happen. And, of course, Noctis was already gone to go fetch the queen, and the, or fetch the princess Lun Lunafrey so she can actually get married and have the, this formality and all that. Well, Niflheim actually did a backstabbing turnaround. Instead of being at Tenerfry where she was supposed to be at, she was in Insomnia. They literally brought her there. Now, she did escape. She got captured again by the notorious villains because they're jerks. Although, that makes me kind of wonder because there's, there's a couple characters that show up and one of them was with the princess at the end of the movie that she's not he's not with her in the game. So I'm not entirely sure how that played off and why that happened. But... She ends up getting his special ring, which is the key ring in the, for the end of the game, and you, she'll give it to you later, and returns to the Noctis. But the ring is basically what gives him the power. The ring is a very important key as well. If you remember those 13 arms I actually was talking about in the first part of the video, about there's, there's actually this a blade for each of the kings. There were 13 kings prior to the Noctis, including his father. His father was number 13. And his father's the 13th armament, which I already have. It's the actual main sword I've been using for the majority of the time. Because it's actually does very decent within combat, but that's besides the point. The ring also is a key to anybody who's not of royal blood to actually talk to the royal guard or arms. Basically, the actual guardians, the keepers of the blades. Now, you're going to die if you put the ring on, because the ring's only specifically made for that bloodline. But you can basically make a plea to them and give yourself almighty powers, which is what the main character, her hero, as he actually was nicknamed in the movie, did to stop the big daemon, so we don't have to worry about that. Now, granted, King died. Insomnia was taken over by the Niflheim. It was rampaged by daemons and everything. So, what's left for us? Well, we still need to get our uh, bride-to-be. Need to collect all the armaments as well as get the blessings of I wanna say there was actually six it's um kinda like a gods. Got like your Behemoth, um Gaia, Titan, uh there's a fire guy, there's an earth there's a whole bunch of them. It's based off the it's bases follows along one of the, uh, the mythology. And I believe one of the books I actually picked up or I looked at earlier, I want to say it was in the first part. Or it might have been in the second part. The, probably both. But if you read the book that actually is there, if you play the game itself, you'll actually see it'll talk about like six creatures and you have to actually get them all together. Well, so the next step right now for us actually is we're going to keep playing through the campaign itself. We're going to be focusing on and the main feature of our focus right now is going to be that. And you'll see as it starts to pull together. But yeah, I wanted to take a moment to bring you guys up to speed and let you know what's going on with the actual King's Glaive side. So if you don't want to go see the movie, here's the information you need at least so you can actually keep playing the game. I mean, it's not that important. I mean, you could have completely played the game without it, but I feel like it's still more of a need to know. Because it's like when I first started playing Final Fantasy XV, I was wondering if I was going to go fight the guys who had to do the stab, uh, stab the king. Or the big daemon thing, because dude... That would be such a crazy battle. I mean, there's a lot of great battles within the game itself as you play through it. But yeah, that's basically going to be the it for it. Well, I'm Kino. This is Lazy Mode Gaming. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. That way you can keep up with our content and all that. You guys have a wonderful day.